imagine, yeah? So collective karma does happen, you know, does exist, yeah? That's what it is. Even though we don't do anything wrong, but if we associate with wrong people, hmm, they can also contaminate you, make trouble. Yeah, even modern people understand that. They say, choose your friends carefully, yeah? And in the Bible even say, don't be among meat eater, wine drinker. Yeah. Ancient time, new time, it's all the same, all the same wisdom that we should choose our associate carefully, yeah, if we can. Sometimes we cannot. So just protect yourself with the five holy names, okay? And whatever the power of your meditation, pray to the Master to protect you, and maybe you're okay, yeah? That is a problem, yeah? We live in the society. It's not possible to always avoid. Sometimes I say a house, but actually it's not. When I say my house, it's actually a cave. Because we always say my house, my house. You know, cave is a very rare phenomenon. So I forgot. Just like recently, I have to talk to a being called the ultimate master, you know, the self. And I forgot that name all the time. I keep saying Supreme Master, <laughs> Enlightened Master, Highest Master, Omnipresent, Omnipresent, anything but the Ultimate Master. And I have to redo it again and say, sorry, I forgot. I, <laughs> I have to say the Ultimate Master when I talk to that being, you know, my great self, whatever. It's habit, you know, when something new is difficult to remember. So therefore, being a greatly enlightened doesn't exempt you from all the trouble water around you, huh? Okay? Mm. Just be always vigilant and protect yourself with all you have, though, and pray to the Master also, always stand by. Mm? But sometimes it's not because of the collective karma, sometimes it's because of your karma. Huh? You did something in the past, and that one rub off into the present, which is the condition through which you can be born and live until you die. It's the uh, the present karma, yeah? Or maybe you have done something and you forget this lifetime. Yeah. Add on karma. <laughs> After initiation, if you don't add on any karma, then you're clean. You should be safe enough, yeah? But if you associate with other people, of course, then it's not as smooth as if you just... If at the time of initiation you keep to yourself until, you know, you're gone, then maybe less trouble. But that's easier said than done. <laughs> Otherwise you wouldn't have come here. <laughs> you would have just stayed with me, or you just have become a monk or nun somewhere, or just stay somewhere enjoying yourself. <laughs> Outside, feel lonelier than when you're alone. Believe me, it's like that. I feel lonelier when I'm in the city with the crowd or in the restaurant, that kind of life. I feel more lonely than when I was in the Himalaya all by myself. And I feel the food don't taste as pure even though so many flavors, you know, not as good as when I was in the Himalaya, you know, baking my own chapati and peanut butter yeah. <laughs> and drink the Ganges River. By the way, yeah, today we mentioned that about my happy time, eh? my happiest time. And you say, oh, we can all go there. And if you go there, then it's not happiest time anymore. <laughs> <laughs> What the, what's the difference if I sit there talk to you or sit here talk to you? <laughs> You're so cute. I meant alone, yeah? <laughs> In a small little hut, <laughs> living with scorpion and snakes and centipede, whatever, yeah. I don't feel as scared as when I live in the city. This kind of fear, you know, from people around you or from the situation or from the world, it just rub off on you. So even if you live together among the people, you still sometimes feel some airy kind of feeling, you know, some not safe feeling, huh? Yeah. So I had to lock my door all the time, just 
at least have peace of mind, you know. Otherwise, every little boom outside or something, I woke up from samadhi even. Yeah, don't feel that safe. Yeah. Even sometimes I forgot to lock the door. I haven't woke me up. I say, security. I say, what means security? Something wrong? And then I look around. Ah, I did not <laughs> lock the door. Yeah, it's funny, you know. It's funny. And uh, they they would give me messages of some some kind of warning. I told you a long time ago that when they send a message, there are some sound, you know, either like melodious music, or some ring like a phone, or like a fax machine, or like SMS and snooze or something like that. But if you sit next to me, you won't hear it. It's just very loud. Sometimes very loud. I mean, loud enough for me to hear, even during my sleep. I would wake up right away, and I asked, "What's wrong?" Okay, then they would send me the email. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, normally it's very short. It's not long because if it's too long, I'm too tired, you know, to check it out. It's very uh, to the point and short, very short. One or two sentences, five words, three words, four words, or one word, and then they let you guess what's the rest of it. <laughs> That's why when they say security, I wonder what. You know? And then I just look around, ah, yeah, maybe it's the door. And sometimes I want to go somewhere and they told me not going. They just said, don't go, that's it. And I have to figure out why. Or I have to ask them, why is that? Because figure it out, take too long, you know? I have to go to Akashic Record or whatever. It's very tiring, yeah? So I ask them why, and then they told me, maybe that's it, one word not safe or unsafe, just like that. Then it's clear enough, there's no need to explain. But if I want to know why unsafe, then of course they will explain. They can be very long-winded also, <laughs> but mostly they know I don't like <laughs> long-winded, so they keep it short. Okay, yeah, the calendar again, huh? Yeah, you like the calendar part, don't you? Huh? Okay, now the monk continue. I encountered limitless Buddhas, and cultivate it in this way until the coming of the thirst come one, king of masterful penetration of mountains and seas. That's the name of the other Buddha until that time. He cultivated until that Buddha come into his life, his world. Then I finally had nobody. My nature and the seas of fragrant waters throughout the ten directions were identical with true emptiness, without any duality or difference. Now I am with the thirst come one, and am known as a pure youth, and I have joined the assembly of bodhisattvas. I mean, all this time he has been so pure like that, and he has never felt his body. He always identified himself with either the fragrant sea, the body of sea water or river, whatever, he had no body at all, all this time. He has the body, but maybe he is too, too purely concentrated. So even though he's born, he always feels like he's a water. <laughs> Lucky nobody keeps throwing stone <laughs> into his body, <laughs> otherwise not only heart pain, your liver, <laughs> lung and everything. <laughs> Imagine going outside there and seeing the, the body of the water moving in front of you or behind you. <laughs> Wouldn't you feel like, okay, test it, <laughs> throw the pong, <laughs> see if it's real water or your illusion. <laughs> Don't do that. If you see some chunk of water moving in front of you, stay away from it. You might get wet, okay? <laughs> and Don't throw stone in him. Now he joined the assembly of uh, Sekamoni Buddha, and then he became a monk. The Buddha asked about perfect penetration by means of the nature of water. <laughs> I penetrated through to the flow of a single flavor, and I obtained patience with the non-existence of beings and phenomena, and the perfection of buddhi. This is the foremost method, concentration on water. So it's not like you just contemplate on water. Or different kind of water, you see, even the water that mixed with your uh, excrement or urine. He's so pure that he can even, he has no differentiation. All of that, it's just like pure water to him. That's why he say he's successful in contemplating water until only one flavor, one 
What a flavor. There's no difference between water or defied water or pure water to him. Okay, uh, next one. The Dharma Prince, Vaidurya Light, his name, arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, I can still remember back through eons as many as the sands of the Ganges. You know everything. <laughs> Maybe I don't need to read. I just need the name. I read the name. <laughs> you add on the rest in your mind. I read it for the sake of somebody at home, okay, who are not here. <laughs> Otherwise, you know everything already. I remember that to the time of a Buddha named Limitless Sound, who, oh, life after life, always Buddha coming and going, huh? Lucky us, huh? Who instructed the Bodhisattvas that fundamental enlightenment is wonderful and bright. He taught them to contemplate this world and all the beings in it as five conditions propelled by the power of wind. That Buddha at that time told his disciples to, to recognize that this world and everything in it is illusion, anyway, <laughs> by the power of the wind, <laughs> meaning from nothing. It's born from nothing. How can the, the power of the wind create anything? So that just means illusion. This world is false. So I'll contemplate on that. At that time, I contemplated the position of the world, and I regarded the passage of time in the world. I reflected on the movement and stillness in my body. I considered the arising of thought in the mind. All these kinds of movements were non-dual. They were equal and the same. I then understood that the nature of movement does not come from anywhere and does not go anywhere. Every single material particle throughout the ten directions and every upside down living being in it is of the same empty falseness. Upside down, yeah? You never know if the, the, the earth is up or down now. We are sitting here upright, but <laughs> maybe our heads are down, we don't know. Huh? <laughs> the world keeps rolling, and sometimes we are up, sometimes we are down. So every upside down living being in it is true. Huh? So all of that is empty, is illusion. And so throughout the three thousand great thousands worlds, the living beings in each of the worlds were like so many mosquitoes confined in a trap and droning monotonously. Caught in those few square inches, their hum built to a maddening crescendo. Not long after I encountered the Buddha, Shikamoni, I attained patience with the non-existence of beings and phenomena. My mind then opened, and I could see the country of the Buddha unmoving in the East. I became a Dharma prince and served the Buddhas of the Ten Directions. My body and my image a light that made them completely clear and translucent. The Buddha asked about perfect penetration. I contemplated the power of wind as lacking anything to rely on, and I awakened to the body-mind. I entered Samadhi and meshed with the single wonderful mind transmitted by all the Buddhas of the Ten Directions. This is the foremost method, according to him. Contemplate on the wind. Can you? <laughs> I mean, the nature of the wind, he means nature of the wind. You, you must really be concentrating. Then the essence will reveal to you. It's not about the wind, because you can't see the wind, you can't touch the wind, you can't even... I imagine what this wind is like, no? But if you concentrate, you think about it long enough. And also because the Buddha transmitted this method, yeah, by the power of the Buddha, things will become clear to a practitioner. So he thinks concentrating on the wind is his method.
There are so many different methods, you know. In Vietnam, one of the master tell his disciples just lay down or sit down and look up on the ceiling and put a piece of red cloth, concentrate on that. And they also, okay. <laughs> Long time ago, one of the enlightened masters in Vietnam taught that method. Just concentrate. Or somebody concentrate on the candlelight. Now, another one. Everything clear of that monk from him, yeah? Okay, we go next one. The clearer the, the story, the less calendar. And I like it also. <laughs> because by now you understand so many things already, I don't have to explain anymore, right? Even I just say one word, you can feel in the rest already, right? The sands of the Ganges River, <laughs> and eons of cow bar. Now, there was another monk named Treasury of Emptiness Bodhisattva, arose from his seat, bowed to the Buddha's feet and said to the Buddha, The thirst come one, and I attained boundless bodies at the place of the Buddha, Samadhi Light, as one of the ancient Buddha. At that time, I held in my hands four huge precious pearls, which shone on Buddha lands as many as the motes of dust in the ten directions, and transformed them into emptiness. In my mind there appeared a great perfect mirror, which emitted from within ten kinds of subtle, wonderful, precious light that poured out into the ten directions to the farthest bounds of emptiness. All the royal lands of Barnas came into the mirror and passed into my body. There was no hindrance to this interaction because my body was like emptiness. My body could enter with ease as many countries as there are fine motes of dust and could do uh, the Buddha's work on a wide scale because it had become completely compliant. I achieved this great spiritual power from contemplating in detail how the four elements lack anything to return to and how the production and extinction of false thoughts is no different from emptiness, how all the Buddha lands are basically the same. Once I realized this identity, I obtained patience with the non-existence of beings and phenomena. The Buddha asked about perfect penetration. I used the contemplation of the boundlessness of emptiness to enter samadhi and attain wonderful power and perfect clarity. This is the foremost method. You see that? Mm -hmm. Another one who contemplate the... Uh, measureless uh, emptiness. But still, it's not like that. This is the power of the Buddha that transmitted to him. So awaken in him this ability, is clarity, purity, in order to perceive wondrous things, which is normal man cannot, and normally he also cannot ever experience before. So that's his method. And I'm just uh, reread to see if anything I need to explain. Anything I need to explain? Oh, well. You're enlightened already, right? Uh -huh. <laughs>